Good afternoon, my re news media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update. And in the news this afternoon, concern raised after vector control halted in Kingston and St. Andrew. The news has been informed that community vector control workers under the Kingston and St. Andrew Health Department have been relieved of their duties, allegedly due to a lack of funding from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. It is understood that the overall enhanced vector control program under the health department has been scrapped and workers were informed of the decision late last week. Jonah Shadow Spokesperson on Health, Jesse James Clark, has taken issue with the decision, especially at a time when vector-borne diseases are expected to rise. We can understand why at this time, in the peak of the dengue season or mosquito breeding season, the ministry would think that it's a good idea to not fund or to stop funding such a critical program at this point in time. We have to give vector control priority at this point in time, and we have to do everything we can to control the mosquito population. So we need these enhanced vector control workers to be, to be out there in the field looking and searching and destroying these mosquito breeding sites, because that is one of the most important ways we can reduce the mosquito population. And this is what it means for the public. The public needs to understand that when the ministry cuts funding to these critical areas, it means that you don't have enough vector control taking place in your community. So we want the ministry to reconsider this decision and to ensure that they re-engage those vector um, control workers. It's also unfortunate that this time of the year when it's right in the middle of back to school, they decide to make persons redundant or unemployed. I mean, you have to also look at the human side of things too as well. So I'm just appealing to the ministry to reconsider this, the decision that they have made. And we're saying that this is such a critical area, we can't understand why the ministry will cut it. Especially in the middle of back to school, where you know many persons have their children to send back to school. Um, just cut the program so suddenly like that is it's very unfortunate. University students left without accommodation after fire got a St. Andrew dwelling. A fire on Monday morning at a property on University Crescent in Papine, St. Andrew, has left 18 students of the University of Technology in need of alternative rooms to lay their heads. It took 17 firefighters more than five hours to extinguish the blaze, which began at 9.28 a.m. No one was injured. Senior Superintendent of the Jamaica Fire Brigade in Kingston at the St. Andrew, Patrick Gooden, told the news that investigators are trying to determine the cause of the fire. The investigators have been called in and they will be going through the premises to look for any possible clue that would allow them to find a possible cause, he said. The affected students are receiving counseling. Jamaica's debt reduction not benefiting ordinary citizens, says Golding. Opposition leader Mark Golding says the reduction in Jamaica's debt has not benefited the economy. Speaking at a People's National Party meeting on Sunday night, Mr. Golding argued that Jamaica's low-wage economy is forcing many to flee the island. U.S. hospital pulls a plug on Jamaican patient. The 23-year-old Jamaican who went to the United States of America in 2021 to pursue a degree in business management and accounting at the Monroe College passed away last Friday. Her heart stopped on Friday and they pulled the plug. Amber's elder sister Kathleen said her voice filled with sorrow. The young Jamaican student's battle for life captured the public's attention. In February, she suffered a minor stroke, which led to the discovery of an arteriovenous malfunction in her brain. To prevent further issues, doctors recommended a procedure to block the abnormal blood vessels. The promising student drove herself 
to the Montefiore Hospital in the Bronx for the surgery on July 30. However, the procedure inadvertently blocked a major artery leading to bleeding around her brain. Amber was placed in a medically induced coma and treated for brain swelling in the intensive care unit. However, on August 9, just 10 days after the procedure, doctors declared her brain dead. But there were concerns about the accuracy of this diagnosis and her family fought to save her life. Her family sought to have her transferred to a facility in Long Island New Beginnings where doctors believed she still had a chance for recovery. Kathleen believes that inadequate nourishment on the part of the hospital contributed to her sister's death. Independent doctors had even submitted affidavits stating that there were still functioning brain cells and a slim chance of recovery remained if Amber had been given more time and care. Her sister voiced her frustration, saying, the world needs to know what they are doing in this country. Prior to her demise, Amber had ongoing heart, lung and brain functions, as well as liver and kidney function. Her sister claimed that the hospital refused to feed her since her surgery on July 30. Amber's father, Richard, is a broken man. I'm not so good. I don't know. I don't drop down yet, so I'm still holding up, he said. The father was denied a visa by the U.S. Embassy in Kingston after he applied for one so he could be at Amber's side. Couple accused of using dead man's debit card Senior Parish Judge Sanchez Borrell prompted investigators to lay additional charges against a couple who are accused of using a dead man's debit card to make purchases at a restaurant and a petrol stations. They need to be charged with other offenses. Charge them under the Cyber Crimes Act. As a matter of fact, if you look under the Law Reform Act, there could be something there. But the Cyber Crimes Act, for sure, they should be charged, the senior jurist advised. The couple, Oliver and Antonella Boddington, appeared before the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court on Monday, where they are charged with larceny by finding and receiving stolen property. It was shared further that the case file, which has been before the court, for the past 10 months is incomplete as there was no statement from the complainant who is deceased. The investigator could get a statement under Section 31D of the Evidence Act the judge noted further. Brief allegations state that between June and August 2023, the Buddingtons were in possession of the dead man's debit card and have been using the card at several businesses in the corporate area. Prosecutors contend that Antonella is seen on surveillance footage at a petrol station using the debit card as well as at a fast food outlet making purchases. We have the analysis from Communications Forensic and the Cybercrime Division and the bank statement the prosecutor indicated. However, the total sum used on the complaint on the debit card was not shared in court. This is no longer larceny by finding. Tell the lawyer what really happened, Borrell told the accused. The Bodingtons, who are on station bail in the sum of $90,000, were ordered to report to the police three times weekly and to surrender their travel documents as conditions of their bail. The matter was adjourned until November 25, when the matter is set for mention. The party nabbed in $40 million a car heist, DNA from a drink bottle links a suspect to grand theft. Investigators used an unfinished bottle of drinks to tie a deportee to a crime scene two years ago. The findings of a DNA analysis were shared by senior parish judge Sanchez Borrell on Monday following the appearance of the accused Ricardo Sudlow. He is before the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court for allegedly stealing five high-end motor vehicles valued at $40 million in one night. He is faced with five counts of larceny of a motor vehicle Conspiracy to commit office breaking and larceny, office breaking and larceny, false declaration, and receiving stolen property. He has not yet entered a plea, even though surveillance footage, which was shared in court, which appeared to show him committing the offenses. It is alleged that on March 16, 2022, between 2 a.m. and 7 a.m., Sudlow forced open the windows to the offices of a car dealership located on Haining Road in St. Andrew and stole three Dell desktop computers valued at $347,000 as well as three 45-inch display screens with a mouse and a keyboard set valued at $231,000. 
Further allegations state that Sudlow reportedly took the keys to five high-end vehicles, a 2015 BMW convertible coupe, a 2014 BMW X6, a 2019 Range Rover Vogue, a 2017 Mercedes-Benz C300, and a 2016 BMW 520i, all of which were parked at the premises. Four of the five vehicles were subsequently recovered. I've been in custody for two years and eight months, and I've been trying to go to a trial. How could I steal five cars in one night? What do you think I should do, Your Honor? Sudlow asked the senior judge. You need to speak to a lawyer, not me, Borrell responded. Sudlow was remanded in custody until November 7, when the matter is set for mention. Guys, thank you for watching. See you this evening at 6 p.m. for another news update.